Hey guys, artist Doug Pexa here. I often get the question, what are the paints that I should get in a starter kit? And what paints do you use? Well, they're kind of both the same because these paints are classic and they really, really can mix anything. There's some varieties I'm throwing in, but this is what you should get. Today, I am in my outdoor studio. And today, I also want to talk about what paints you should have in your kit, especially for a beginner, and some alternatives. Um, start really with the basics. I do not use, I don't, I don't have a lot of colors, I don't use a lot of colors. But these are the ones you should start with and learn how to mix. And then I'll show you kind of how I organize them on my palette and what I use for my palette. So of course, you need a white. Titanium white is great. Um, you can also use a flake white. I will get into another video about the difference between titanium and flake white. Titanium yellow light. Get the light. Don't don't do the medium hue. Get the light. This will give you the best result. Alternative to this is like a lemon yellow. Uh, I don't use that one. I use this one exclusively. Uh, kind of going in order how I uh, organize them on my palette too. So another one essential for earthy tones is the yellow ochre. Uh, yellow ochre is a great paint for flesh colors. It's much better than the cadmium because it has a more natural look to it. But if you want really rich, bright colors in your skin tones, you can use that. Again, go into the reds, cadmium red light. Do the light, not the medium or the dark, because you can darken this. You can darken that with the Elysium Crimson, which is uh, another standard that you should have. Uh, there is another color uh, that's very beautiful that you can use, but it's very expensive. And I am spacing on the name right now, uh, but it's a very expensive mineral. So um, the next one, Sap Green. I recommend Sap Green. Um, because it is a uh, nice earthy but it's a rich earthy color and with this color here you can make some beautiful blacks i know in past videos i have said i never use black i am stepping back from that statement i've been using black again um, but use these for rich colorful blacks that go either to the cool or the warm side um, then also Prussian blue uh, I use this one mostly however you can use the ultramarine which is also a very beautiful but strong color even stronger would be the phthalo blue um, this one is pretty intense so um, I use this sparingly. Uh, also for blue, I usually don't put it out, but this is one that I use a lot, uh, the Cerulean blue. Uh, it's a lighter blue than uh, the Prussian and the Ultramarine and the Phthalo. However, with white, I feel like you can, with the Prussian blue, you can really get that color, but if you really want like a really light, kind of that aqua-y color, this is a great blue also. Um, and then you should always have a, a mid-brown. Um, burnt sienna is my choice. Um, there's a couple other burnts, you know, burnt umber, burnt this, that, the other thing. I really don't think you need too many browns in your kit. Uh, one will do because with like this color and that color, you can mix different kinds of um, browns, warmer, cooler, with adding uh, complementary colors um, together, um, make some lovely colors that way. And something I may not have out here, oh, 
I should mention black doesn't really matter what black you use I use a cheap one uh, this is lamp black Mars black is also good they tend to be on the cool blue side uh, so you can add this with believe it or not cadmium yellow light and get some great great natural greens out of it kind of that almost olive green so I use this never straight I usually put something in here um, you know then there's things like Van Dyke brown I don't have that one but it's a good conjunction with this for dark dark rich browns and one last one that I have in my kit over here because I think it's just a beautiful color and it's hard to make. The dioxazine purple. Dioxazine purple. Dioxazine purple. I use this in conjunction also with some other colors like the green, the blue, and, and uh, the alizarum to make some nice blacks too. So, but this one doesn't come out often unless I'm really looking for that rich, beautiful purple. Other than that, that's what I use. Like I said, I do use these all in about the order I had them. You know, the blues kind of mixing in together. If I have the Cerulean in there, he'll sit right there on my palette. And it goes kind of like that uh, if I have the green in. The, for really in, I don't know why I can't say that. I put that there. Um, if you're going to be painting, get the big tubes of the colors you use the most, like white, um, because you use a lot, it's more cost effective. What do I use for my palette now? You know, you, there's a lot of things you can use for your palette. I use this piece of glass, it's a tempered piece of glass. That's why it's not taped if you use a thinner glass. Uh, most people will actually take some masking tape and tape the edges so they don't cut themselves. This will never cut me, uh, believe it or not. This thing was, you know, quarter inch thick with paint just a little bit ago. I just cleaned it so it's pretty clean. There's still some tape on the back and some just smudges here and there, but I don't care. Uh, and we got this, believe it or not, it's a reuse, a recycle type of situation. This was a shelf in an old, old, old uh, icebox slash refrigerator that was probably 50 years old or something like that. So it worked very well. I've used it forever. Now let's go paint something. All right. So I'm going to do a couple small small paintings today might not do all of them on video but I got all these preps so let's do it I don't know I think I'm gonna paint this leaf here but well let's take a peek at my palette again this is what I'm gonna be using for paint I may add some other ones but Right now, that's all I'm gonna use, so. So now you know some basic colors that are great uh, for starting out. Now let's put them to use, you know. Great way to start out a painting is just blocking in your subject, you know, and if you're new at uh, art and painting, use a reference, whether it's live like this leaf or if it's just something that from a photograph or whatever. Uh, also be very wary of the negative space which is around the object and the object should not always be in the center, uh, it can be, um, but you want to really concentrate on the loveliness of the, the forms. You'll notice I also put a dark shadow underneath the form uh, to give it some depth 
and uh, so it kind of pops out the canvas a little bit. That's that dark area. Uh, sorry, there's a little glare from the sunlight uh, coming through the trees. But uh, as you can see, I'm adding details as I go and working all over the canvas, really. Uh, or in this case, the um, coaster. Uh, the colors are a little muted from uh, the actual leaf, but I start bringing in more color. But I kind of wanted him to be a little earthier. So remember, you don't have to have it uh, exactly as you see it. It's just a reference. Um, and don't forget to sign the piece when it's done. And there you have it. A nice completed piece, and uh, it is for sale. Cool. All right, I hope that was informative. You know what, if it is, why don't you hit the like button and maybe subscribe because I'm gonna have a lot more informational videos like this. And I hope you like the painting. If you're interested in that painting, uh, my coaster paintings start at 50 bucks. I can also frame them for about 40, depending on uh, what you want. I can customize the frame a little bit from my standard, like which color you like and all that stuff. So keep that in mind. Uh, this is, again, one of my daily vlogs that I'm doing. See my last video uh, to see why I'm daily vlogging.